Welcome to Muddy River News this week. I'm David Adam. I'm the editor here at Muddy River News, and I'm pinch hitting for Bob Goff this week. Say an extra prayer for Bob. He's on the road this week uh, dealing with the death of a family member. And so today I am talking with Dan Teefee, and he is the newly named president of the Tracy Family Foundation, a not-for-profit 501c3 uh, out of Mount Sterling that is funded by Dot Foods. Now that I have all of that explanation out of the way, welcome. And thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, David. Uh, Dan is taking over for Gene Buckley, uh, one of uh, the Tracy daughters who has been in charge of the foundation for 26 and plus years. You were just named to the position in January, is that correct? That's right, David. So uh, you'd been the executive director since 2017 so for people who don't know a lot about what the foundation does what does the foundation do yeah we really have two primary missions so the one that's most obvious to the public is that we invest resources in nonprofit organizations throughout West Central Illinois and some around the country to help them to do really amazing things they're already doing. So we have five focus areas education which is public and private schools mm -hmm. youth families Brown County, we do everything you can think of in Brown County, and then our newest focus area is mental health. Oh, okay. And then the second part of our mission is really to keep the Tracy family connected to one another and to develop a philanthropic spirit in all generations of the Tracy family. Well, now, and we want to make sure this is straight because I had to ask Dan this before we got started. Uh, I know Jean is one of the uh, Robert Tracy's daughters. Susan Stammer John, who was now taking over your position, is one of the daughters. You have no Tracy blood in you, correct? I don't, no. I, I'm not a Tracy family member. I did not marry a Tracy family member. That's right. I did grow up in Mount Sterling. So Which I is grew close up, enough. That's there's exactly plenty, right. There's plenty of Tracys in Mount Sterling. I'm sure you touched one of them or some, in, during your time in, in Mount Sterling. That's right. Uh, so the foundation, I believe, I read, uh, has, has uh, granted close to $70 million uh, to more than, I believe, 70 different organizations. Can you give me ideas or, or examples of this is where our money went toward in West Central Illinois? Yeah, yeah. So that $70 million would have went to hundreds of organizations right. across the country all around. But in each of those focus areas in West Central Illinois, we've provided funding to about every public school that would be in West Central Illinois. There's 13 Catholic schools in our education bucket mm -hmm. that are in West Central Illinois that we spend a lot of time with investing funds in. And those projects range anywhere from curriculum to helping to serve teachers better to improve student, or student and, and teacher culture within mm -hmm. those schools. In our youth focus area, there's a lot of youth service organizations like the Boy Scouts or Young Life that we provide funding for. In our families focus area, we focused on marriage enrichment. So we have a big project right now. We're working with churches to help them really enrich family and couples relationships mm -hmm. within their marriage. And so across all of our focus areas, anything that helps communities thrive and families flourish, we want to be there and support that work. All right. So now you've been the executive director since 2017. How does your role change now? with the move to the president? My day-to-day -day work is, is the same. For the last several years, I've been in charge of operations. Some of the biggest changes within the organization are going to happen at our board level. Okay. So Jean had been president of the foundation for 26 years. She has been the only leader of the TFF board of trustees mm -hmm. in all of that time since 1997. And so her sister, Susie, will be taking over the board leadership now and is the new board chair. But for a number of years, I've been very involved in right. operations and, and managing our staff, helping us to achieve our strategic objectives. So as far as the day-to-day -day work of the foundation, that work will continue. To okay. Um, now, other than the fact that the foundation is funded by Dot Foods, do you work in concert with Dot Foods on some of the things that you do, or are you your own separate uh, entity? We're always working together and trying to compare notes and coordinate. But Dot Foods really does their philanthropic work through two entities. One is Dot Charitable. So they do a lot of food donations, a lot mm -hmm. of supportive or organizations or schools that don't have to do with academic matters. And so those are usually projects you'll see with the DOT logo associated with right. them. So DOT's corporate employees will do all of that work directly. We're more specifically the work of the Tracy family as the Tracy Family Foundation. And so our focus areas are slightly different, but we don't want them to overlap with one another. So we're always comparing notes okay. and trying to make sure we're going to make the biggest impact. Now, as, as I did my research for this interview, um, 
you know, I, I looked you up on looked up, up online, tried to read some yeah. things, and, and and the most interesting thing that I found was that your professional career started as a boy or as a young man in Mount Sterling as a horse stall cleaner at the Brown County Fairgrounds. That's exactly right. I'm quite proud of that. I was gonna, <laughs> how, how has that experience shaped you for your life going forward? Yeah, I, I've kind of always believed in whatever role I've had, particularly in leadership, that it, good leaders are willing to do any task. <laughs> and you can't ask people to do anything you're not, be, you're not willing to do yourself. Okay. And so I think that began cleaning horse stalls. And, you know, you'd lead the horse out of the stall. I was in junior high, high school. So I grew up with a horse farm. My parents always had horses. We had horses around. And so we had standard bred race horses. And so those horses were kept out at the fairgrounds. And my task was to lead that horse out every day and to go up and and to clean that manure, Uh, which is a pretty thankless task. Uh, But someone's got to do it because it literally piles up if someone's not cleaning those (laughs) stalls every day. And so I, I feel like that was an important task that I learned the value of hard work and learned the value of doing things that people weren't going to notice. And but my, we're important. And my guess is the same thing holds true. If you don't do some of the crap jobs that are in running a foundation, it piles up over hey, time. That's probably true. I think that's probably true in any job. <laughs> that's right. So uh, you graduated from, uh, from Broward County High School, went to the University of Illinois, started a law career and in Chicago, and then you switched courses. You became the pastor of a church in West Lafayette, Indiana. How did... Just explain the, you know, to go from being an attorney to a pastor. How did that happen? Yeah, so I think people, when they look at my career trajectory, they always think, man, he just really couldn't figure out what he wanted to do. So every decade, he just changes his career path entirely. <laughs> I, I haven't experienced it that way. I think that uh, I'm wired, I always say, to restore broken things. And so what I really am energized by is identifying community issues or community problems and then collaborating with other people to come up with solutions that are actionable to those problems. And so I think every role I've had has been the opportunity to do that. And so in law, someone brings you a legal issue, your job is to think about strategies to help them solve that legal issue. I went to seminary and was a pastor, and many people are dealing with complex spiritual issues or relational conflict. And so I love that role because people would bring those issues or I got the chance to share about them through sermons and help people to walk through the complexities of life. Mm -hmm. This role I feel like is bringing both of those things together. I I get to use the legal thinking in a lot of our work and thinking about strategies. I get to use the pastoral sense and caring for people, identifying community problems that we want to address. Mm -hmm. And it comes together in this role and it's part of why I love it so much. So the the foundation now, you know, I was saying, award nearly seventy million dollars to all these different organizations um, how does how do you determine the organizations to which you give this money do they apply to you do you reach out to them so it's a little mix of both David okay. so we certainly have community issues that sometimes come up and there aren't existing nonprofit organizations working on those issues so our staff will go out and do research we'll look at national or international best practices organizations that are doing really great work in that space and we'll bring those ideas to West Central Illinois and make them happen. So a good example is in Brown County, we opened an early learning center in 2021. Mm -hmm. We did a survey, Brown County said the biggest need they had was childcare options. There weren't enough childcare options, and so we bought a building, renovated it, put together a partnership with the YMCA, and now it has 60 kids, infants through pre-K in Brown County now. So we do some of that proactively. A lot of our work, though, are nonprofit organizations within West Central Illinois that fit one of those five focus areas. They can go onto our website, they can hit apply for a grant, and they tell us about good projects they're already doing. And then our staff team evaluates those projects, and then ultimately our board approves those grants that go out to those organizations. So can, can you tease us and let us know what are some of the projects that you're working on now? So. Some of the big projects we have right now in Brown County, for instance, we continue to support that early learning center. Right. We have a big trails project, so we're going to lay asphalt on our first trail as a part of the Brown County Master's Trailways Plan mm-hmm. here in April, and it's a three quarters of a loop asphalt trail in a park, and then we have multiple other phases for that trails work. In our education space and mental health space, one of the areas we're really interested in right now is digital screen health for students. 
So we hear a lot nationally, certainly in our area, about mental health concerns with students. And so we have two national partners, Screen Sanity and Half the Story, who have developed really wonderful curriculum and strategies to help parents talk to their kids about how to use their phones in healthy ways, how to manage screen time, how to help your kids develop healthy digital habits. And so we're sending out that programming through schools and local organizations now. But we have a whole host of projects that right. I well, I'm go sure, through, I'm, Yeah, I'm sure are people exciting. are coming to you yeah. with all kinds of things they are. in regard to that. And, 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 and to that, um, thank you. Thank you to, to, to you and to the foundation, I mean, because you're really enriching the lives of, of people throughout West Central Illinois. Yeah, it's exciting work to be a part of, and it's a real testimony to the vision that RT and Dorothy had in starting Dot Foods, and not just starting a company, but a company that would invest in local communities. Yeah. And that certainly is carried on in the second generation when they started the foundation, and the Tracy family still is passionate about investing those resources back in the communities to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come over and visit with us, and good luck. Yeah, thank you, David. And thank you for joining us today on Muddy River News This Week. You can catch this video and others just like it on our new website, muddyriver.tv.